Mitra Ray as a tried and proven expert. She brings over 30 years experience to bear on tonight's topic. She has a bachelor's degree from Cornell and a PhD from Stanford, and she knows the biochemistry of durable health. I call it durable health. As a research scientist at Stanford, she received NIH grants and received the Young Investigator Award from the Federation of American Societies in Experimental Biology. Her research has been published in the prestigious journals of Science, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and the Journal of Cell Biology. During her time at Stanford, Dr. Ray or Mitra had a teachable moment in her own health journey that changed the course of her life and her life's work. For decades, she's been educating audiences around the world on the power of healthy living and of whole food nutrition. She's a scientist, she's an author, speaker, educator, entrepreneur, mentor, most importantly, a mom on a mission. One of my favorite quotes is, we tend to bask in the false coziness of unapplied knowledge. And she is all about the application of science, doing the do, she's empowered and helped hundreds of thousands walk the talk, align science and compliance and do the do of what you know you should be doing. What I love about her is she embodies intellectual rigor, a brave heart, curiosity, and humility. She's even got a cocktail named after her. She's, she's cool. <laughs> she, but she, in the end, she's a, I, I consider her a boss babe, a badassery, if you will, in the world of healthy living. Um, she lives with her husband uh, in Marysville, Washington. She's the proud, they're the proud parents of three healthy, strong daughters. I'm honored to call her my friend, my colleague and mentor. We here in this global healthy living community call her a friendly free radical. Uh, my nickname for her is Yoda. Mitra, welcome and thank you for sharing your intellect, your heart and your in insights with us tonight. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate uh, that incredible introduction, Jeff. And uh, who feels like they're a little bit on guard right now, right? You know, that's kind of actually a scary picture. Um, honestly, if you had to stare at a picture, which one do you feel would be more helpful to your immune system right now? This one or this one? You guessed it. Let's all take a deep breath. I know I need to. <sighs> I wasn't sure if all the technology was gonna work tonight. And I just am very honored to be with you tonight. I want to start with my own story. 26 years ago, I was in bad shape, but I didn't think I was. If you had asked me if I thought I was healthy, I would have said yes. After all, I had regular physical exams and everything seemed to be fine on the surface. The reality is that my lifestyle as a researcher was one of poor sleeping habits, mindless eating habits, and daily exposure to dangerous toxins and radiation. I was married to my science and didn't really know much about what it took to be healthy. And I was, even though I was being funded by the National Institutes of Health to, to study cancer and Alzheimer's disease, and it wasn't until I had a serious injury in my neck that I had to take a hard look at my own lifestyle. I'll share more of my own story later as we go, but let's dive into the topic of the day, immune intelligence. The reason I say intelligence is because I cannot think of a better word than that to describe the complexity of our immune system as it's our defense system. And defense systems require gathering intelligence about what may be trying to invade our host body and then creating an intelligent strategy to defend ourselves. The good news is that our immune system is usually quite capable of doing its job as long as it's properly funded. Our immunity starts from the outside in and gets very complex as we dive in at the cellular level. On the outside, we have physiological barriers. First is our skin, which provides a physical barrier to the outside world. Fatty acids make up the membrane of the, fat of the skin cells, we also have a repertoire of antibodies called defensins. Then we have lysozymes, which basically break down the membranes of bacteria. And we have friendly bacteria known as commensal flora that live on our skin. And this is all part of the skin's immunity. 
much of the time you need not worry about your skin unless you cut yourself or you're, you're so dry that you have cracks in your skin. In which case your immune system targets the area to make sure the cut doesn't get infected by bacteria or other small organisms. The redness and the swelling that up follows is also known as inflammation, the result of your immune system fighting what is usually a small battle in the scheme of things. Our skin can also be a transient carrier for viruses, bacteria, and other microorganisms, and that is why washing your hands with soap lathering up is always recommended when you're out in public. Okay, the mucosa of the re respiratory system as well as um, in the, the, the solution in your eye, is the next big barrier to the outside world. As we breathe in air, we also have to defend ourselves from breathing in microorganisms, especially viruses. I used to get sick on uh, long international flights, being stuck in a small space with international passengers, and then with the time zone difference, I wouldn't get proper sleep. So now my favorite trick when I fly on a plane for any amount of time is to put Vaseline in my nostrils. I, I find that the petroleum jelly as opposed to some kind of natural product is a much better app to basically capture viruses in your nostrils. It's not 100%, but it's pretty darn good. Now, the mucosa of the gut is basically, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give right now um, in my mind is the most important barrier for us to concern ourselves with where we have the most control and your gut immunity is also the factor that's probably the least talked about although that's changed because it's so complex so that requires a more in-depth discussion discussion and I'll get into that so why do we have these barriers it's to protect ourselves from foreign substances so let's get into some vocabulary. A pathogen could be a microorganism like bacteria or a virus or mold or other parasites. The part of the pathogen that induces an immune response is called the antigen. An antigen could also simply be a, a chemical like a pollutant or it could be pollen. So an antigen is anything that our immune system makes antibodies for as a way to protect ourselves. The immune system is typically divided into two general categories, the innate and the adaptive, although there's some overlap. The innate immunity refers to your uh, non-specific de defense mechanisms. So the, these come in play immediately or within hours after exposure to an antigen. These mechanisms include chemicals and immune system cells that attack foreign cells in the body. Now, the adaptive immunity refers to the immune response that happens a little bit later and is specific to the antigen of the day. Okay, I don't know about you, but I love to geek out on how cool your body is. Your immune system is amazing. Honestly, look at these graphics. Now, even though they're cartoons, don't those cells look like they're from outer space or something? You'll need to study this because there's going to be a quiz coming up. So. If we were to be infected, we all have our own baseline capacity to deal with an infection. That's your innate immunity. It's our 24 seven serving system. This team will contain the situation as best as possible while our body has a chance to send intelligence gained by the innate system and take it over to the war machine that is our adaptive immunity. Then we go to war with the pathogen and if we have enough what I call immune currency units, we have every reason to win. But whether we like it or not, the war has to be properly funded. Now, this seems like a ton of info to know for what you thought was a simple self-help event. I feel you. So let's go back to these little space creatures or the space creature looking cells. I was thinking that it takes so much time and energy and effort to learn the immune system that we should restart teaching our kids in school or maybe even earlier. I mean, it makes me want to create little fluorescent immune cell crib toys to start teaching our babies right away. What do you think? <laughs> 
Okay, well, you know, that picture I showed you in the beginning of you defending yourself against microbes, well, guess what? Inside you, there are trillions of bacteria, and in nature, there's usually a one to 10 ratio of bacteria to virus. So there's probably hundreds of trillions of viruses inside you already. The main point of our immune intelligence has been, the main point that I'm trying to make is that, that our immune intelligence has been passed down to us for millions of years of evolution of our species on this planet. We just have to fund the immune system properly and your immune system has your back. It is desi designed also to see new and potential, new potential threats and act accordingly. But you have to reserve, you have to have reserves in, the, in, in your bank to fight the war. So when you see an organism, you, your immune system is up to the task of fighting it. So I'm just kind of testing to see if you're with me or not. Which of these will improve your innate or adaptive immunity? Hmm, neither. <laughs> okay, so I told you that when we are under attack by outside elements, the war that ensues has to be funded. Let me introduce my way of explaining the big picture, the concept of immune currency units and your immunity vault. And what you want to start with each day is a minimum of 100 immune currency units. That minimum ICU balance can buy you the full capacity of your adaptive immunity to kick in, most likely, to intelligently assess the nature of the antigen. Is it actually a life-threatening virus or not? Or maybe it's just pollen. Our immune system needs to respond accordingly without overreacting or underreacting. That is immune intelligence and you need ICUs to buy, the, buy that intelligence. According to an article published in Guardian in 2017, on average, each of us will get around 200 colds in our lifetime. Who wants to be average? More importantly, who wants to get 200 colds? This fact tells me that most people's immune systems are underfunded. In my immune currency model, if you could consistently start each day with a minimum of 100 ICUs in your immune vault, you shouldn't have that many colds and you shouldn't be too challenged by invading pathogens. And I base my model on current research, as well as my personal experience with me, my family, and my client base of many thousands of people. So instead of this becoming a medical seminar on how the immune system works, which uh, we really don't have anyway because it's incredibly complex, I will talk about what helps you build your daily ICUs, your immune currency units, and what does not. Okay, this picture might be a bit exaggerated, but let's assess the situation a little more closely. I told you there was going to be a quiz, but relax. This is more of a BuzzFeed-like quiz than an immunology quiz. First question, do you smoke regularly or have you smoked for you know, your entire life? I'm just gonna talk about today. If today you had a cigarette, subtract minus 220 ICUs, okay? Start keeping tabs for this quiz. Do you drink alcohol regularly? Minus 20 ICUs for the first two drinks, and then thereafter, it's minus 30 ICUs for each additional drink. I'm going to explain more about why this affects your immune system, but for now, we're taking a quiz. Do you get out in the sun, or do you get adequate amounts of vitamin D3? Minus 40 ICUs for each day that you don't. Do you worry constantly or anger easily? Minus 20 ICUs per 30 seconds of negative thought. Do you sleep well at night? Minus 50 ICUs. Sleep is a big deal. Per, minus 50 ICUs per night of poor sleep. Do you exercise regularly? Minus 20 ICUs per day lacking exercise. And finally, do you have a sad American diet full of processed foods and animal products. That's minus 60 to 80 
immune currency units per sad meal or snack. How do we do? Anyone a little bit in ICU debt? <laughs> you may be wondering, how am I still alive, right? Let's talk about how we can get out of debt and into ICU surplus so we can enjoy the benefits of a robust immune system. Did you know that cigarette smoke contains more than 7,000 chemicals? And many of them interfere with your immune system. Most people know that smoking causes cancer, especially lung cancer. I also want to remind us that smoking increases the chances of viral and bacterial infections, especially in the lungs. For example, pneumonia, influenza, tuberculosis. It also affects periodontal and gum disease. It can exasperate bacteria, it can cause or exasperate bacterial meningitis, which is a disease that attacks the protective membranes um, covering the brain and the spinal cord. It affects more, it create, causes more infections after surgery, most likely. It uh, also exasperates rheum rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease, which is a serious disease of the digestive system. So this is a really good time to stop smoking or at least start curbing your smoking habits. And you can also start to reverse some of that damage by taking a plant powder concentrate that has been clinically shown to improve pulmonary function in heavy smokers. I'll be talking more about this Juice Plus later. Now, there are countless studies about alcohol consumption and how it impairs mucosal immunity in the lower respiratory system and the mucosal system of the gut that we talked about earlier. Alcohol also results in something called neuroinflammation activation, which increases risky decision-making. It also increases promoting and sustaining high levels of drinking. This simply means one drink can lead to more drinking. Also, it means that if you started drinking when you were young, chances are you're gonna keep drinking into your old age. This also plays a significant role in neural degeneration as well as immunity in the body. So it affects your brain and your immune system. On the other hand, each eight ounce glass of pure water, give yourself 30 ICUs, okay, that you drink. Now, did you think that 20 ICUs was a lot to lose from just 30 seconds of negative thinking? It is, but it's true. In one study, Harvard University scientists found that in healthy people, simply recalling an angry experience from the past can cause a dip in your immune system that lasts six hours. Wow. The good news is that while one angry thought or memory can inhibit the immune system for six hours, simply watching a humorous video or anything that makes you laugh can help your immune system function better for 12 hours. So we got to get some good jokes in here. <laughs> now, how does sleep affect your immunity? Well, we talked about your adaptive immunity. This requires sleep. Have you ever uh, experienced brain fog from not getting enough sleep? Well, what this picture is actually showing you is how you're, you, you need to have your immune systems, what, when you're sleeping is when your immune system is learning about, learning more about the antigen. So your immune system can also have brain fog from not sleeping. Your immune intelligence requires a good night's sleep to gather the information it needs for what kind of an antigen we're dealing with so it can go to work to make effective antibodies as well as other strategies of the immune system and remembering the information for future reference. So let's get some sleep and rack up those in, in immune currency units. Okay, we talked about exercise. How much exercise? Exercise is important to get in the right dose. In this graph, if you look at exercise intensity along the horizontal axis, and we go from being a couch potato to moderate to someone who over-exercises, basically, there's something called the J-curve for how exercise intensity correlates to the risk of respiratory infections. At zero or low levels of exercise, you have an average chance of getting infected. And as you exercise more, it first decreases until you get too much exercise. 
So you, if you might say, well, I'll take my chances and not exercise much and just, you know, be one of those people that gets average of 200 colds a year. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's a reverse J curve for heart disease. So no exercise or low amounts of exercise really increases your chances of cardiovascular disease. So moderate is the way to go. And this means about 150 minutes a week, which works out to be about 20 minutes a day. So if you're an elite athlete, you're saying, well, what does that mean for me? Well, you can flatten this curve by eating more of a rainbow um, colored plant-based diet. These plants protect your body from the free radical damage that occurs from too much exercise. I talked about plant concentrates already, which is beautiful food technology I really believe in. It's not just a vitamin supplement, mind you, and I do not believe in vitamin supplementation in general. However, people who exercise spend most of their money on most, the, they spend the most money on supplements. So I wanted to point, this, uh, point out this retrospective overview of the literature on exercise and supplementation. A search of Medline, PubMed, and the Cochrane Library returned only six, only six original published clinical research articles of any kind that pertain to exercising people and their immune systems. Only one plant concentrate demonstrated this, any kind of positive impact on the immune system in this published clinical research. So I will say that moderate exercise supported by plant nutrition will give you lots of ICUs in your immune vault. Now we talked about sunshine. Ideally, you wanna get 30 minutes of sun twice a week, and that's worth 40 ICUs in the bank. But let's talk ideal versus real because too many of us don't have access to sunlight, especially the further you get away from the equator. You can supplement with vitamin D2 or D3. It's not really a vitamin, it's hormones. But with D2, there's very little chance of overdosing. On the other hand, D3 will get you up to proper levels faster, but there is a risk of overdosing. D3 comes from either uh, len in sheep's wool or from lichen, which is algae. And for all the animal lovers out there, don't stress too much about the small amounts of animal products in your D3 supplement. And that's a direct quote from PETA um, and their website. And PETA stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. I personally recommend, as a rule of thumb, 5,000 IUs in the summer and 10,000 IUs in the winter. And also, you may want to get your blood tested for vitamin D every six months. Now we come to the final and perhaps the most important source of ICUs to lose or gain, our diet. I believe this is a lot easier to change than people think it is, especially if you take advantage of the food technology of our times. So let's explore more about how your gut mucosa protects you, as this is where most of your ICUs go daily. We have over 20 feet of intestinal tubing between our small and large intestines. And for the longest time, our intestines were not considered a vital organ like our heart or liver or brain. Well, that's changing. Now imagine this tubing. Down the center of this intestinal tube is your gut mucosa. And in that gut mucosa live trillions of bacteria of many different species. It's like a whole universe down there. And we, what we feed that bacterial universe can either support or challenge immunity. This is a very simple drawing showing a cross section now of that mucosa and where the bacteria live and the gut lining. The blue part represents the mucosa and the bacteria that live there. And they're supposed to break down plants that we eat and turn them into important nutrients that we need to live a healthy life. They also help us with our immune system. The left side represents a healthy bacterial colony and a normal immune system versus the one on the right, which is not so healthy and which leads to immune disorders. In other words, an immune system in ICU debt, which creates long-term health challenges 
such as autoimmune diseases, allergies, and metabolic disorders. The blue top represents the gut mucosa where there are trillions of bacteria that break down the food that we eat and make the nutrients that we absorb. Every time I eat, there are these little dendritic cells in the immune system that literally periscope out into that lumen to see what the heck I just ate and what kind of pathogens might have come along for the ride. Because every time you eat, you are introducing microorganisms from the outside. The message of these cells that they relay back to the immune system is going to be either, oh, phew, she just had a kale smoothie with lots of nuts and seeds and some juice plus complete. We love that stuff. All is good. Or it's red alert, red alert, incoming, incoming. So let's take a look at another picture of the gut and dive in a little bit deeper. Again, on the top left side, you see what we call a diverse set of helpful bacteria, and they're out there doing their thing. But on the right side, those little brown critters represent an overgrowth of parasites that feed off of processed foods or animal tissue. Now, your intestines are such a nice place for microorganisms. It's warm and cozy in there, and there's an endless supply of food. They love to hang out in there and have sex and eat food and multiply. And I use the word sex loosely because a lot of kinky exchange of DNA is happening down there. So either way, your diet is either going to feed microorganisms, feed the good microorganisms or the bad ones. The question is, who do you want to feed? Like it or not, the good guys tend to be plant eaters. So on the right side is the result of the sad American diet rich in processed foods with usually simple carbohydrates and animal products and devoid of the fiber and the plant phytonutrients that feed a healthy gut flora. On the left side, we have a healthy gut due to a diet that is plant strong and made up of whole foods. Below is the resulting immune function. Either you have an inflamed gut, which causes your entire immune system to go out of balance over time, or you have a working uh, intelligent immune system and that is, on, that is balanced, which is what you see on the left side. Let me share how I healed my gut. 26 years ago, I had inflammation in my neck and I was buying ibuprofen in bulk. Even though I was walking the halls with Nobel laureates at Stanford Medical School, no one told me that the inflammation in my neck wasn't healing due to the inflammation in my gut. In search of answers, I began a juicing regimen. It was at that time someone brought me this brochure on a product called Juice Plus. It compared how many glasses of juice I would have to drink made of the same seven fruits and eight veggies that, are in, that were in the original fruit and veggie blend. I noticed that I would have to drink several glasses of all that variety to get the same amount of vitamin C, B complex, beta carotene, etc which all help not just our immune system, but every cell in the body. I also noticed that I would get a fraction of the sugar as juicing. All that nutrition without the sugar and the calories, not to mention the work and the cost involved in juicing, I said, sign me up, and I've never looked back. As a biochemist, I got that this technology existed as I used it in the lab regularly to dehydrate cells. People say they eat right, but most people aren't getting the synergy of whole foods. No one fruit or veg has an overdose of any one nutrient. They each have a cornucopia of thousands of phytonutrients that effectively work together to feed your body. The technology used to make Juice Plus takes vine ripened produce like this apple, crushes it down, and that makes it into a whole food powder under control condi conditions, and then puts it into a plant-based capsule. So you can safely top off your vitamin C levels with Juice Plus, and you can see that it does that because eight weeks into taking this trio of fruit, veggie, and berry blend, you see the rise of vitamin C and it stays up there. So that means you're topped off with your vitamin C. By the way, no fruit or vegetable has a thousand milligrams of vitamin C, nor do you have receptors for a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. 
An apple will typically only have five milligrams of vitamin C. Yet, we can all agree that an apple will do more good than a vitamin pill because of all those other nutrients that I just showed you that work in synergy with that vitamin C. I'm not a believer in overdosing on anything, including vitamins. And there's plenty of research showing it's not a good idea to take large doses of single nutrients. We don't have vitamin deficiencies. We have whole food deficiencies. Juice Plus is an encapsulated whole plant powders that uses state-of-the-art food technology. In fact, we have study after study showing how these plant nutrients are not just in the plant powders, but actually get into your blood serum to protect you. This is the latest study, which also includes our vegan omega capsules, showing how all these nutrients increase in our blood from taking Juice Plus, omega fats, vitamin C, vitamin E, beta carotene, and more. And all this supports not just your immune system, but every cell in your body. We could spend all night looking at the data supporting the efficacy of these plant products. In fact, there are some 20-some 20 bio, 20 bioavailability studies showing that the nutrients in Juice Plus actually get into the body. You can go to juiceplus.com to see that. And there's four studies specifically on the immune system that have been done on four different populations. One was done with healthcare professionals that are in direct contact with six patients daily. One on elderly population who seem to have a, a weakened immune system in general. One on young law students stressed out during exam week. And one on athletic men, as I already discussed, too much exercise without proper nutrition can put you at risk as an athlete. All four studies showed how well Juice Plus supports the immune response by reducing the number of sickness days along with other markers. Then there are five studies on systemic inflammation parameters improving with these plant concentrates. Since I have limited time here, I will direct you to that website and any of those green university names will actually take you directly to the clinical study. I'm a big fan of this plant, te plant technology for all, these, for all these reasons and more. And I love the fact that there's all these convenient products for me and my family to get more of these plant nutrients into our body. We also try to eat right. This is a picture I took to show you what we stock up on. Fruits, veggies, berries, mushrooms, beans, lentils. In other words, high fiber plant foods that supports a good gut flora. A plant-based diet and plant concentrates can increase your plant consumption to over 50 rainbow plants a day. Now, now it's like raining ICUs and you're earning interest. And we grow our own as well. The Tower Gardens by Juice Plus is the state-of-the-art technology that can help everyone acquire a green thumb. When thinking about food sovereignty and security, I feel really good that we own these aeroponic towers and we can grow food ourselves so easily with one-tenth the water, one-tenth the space in a closed system without any runoff to ruin the environment. Imagine having an herb or a cooking tower, or a juicing or smoothie tower, or simply a salad tower. And by the way, if you get your kids involved, they will eat what they grow. So how fast can you grow food? In as little as 21 days, you could be eating lettuce you grew in the corner of your kitchen or any small space in the house. And I also love having these lights indoors, especially in the winter, to provide some of the benefits of sunlight, especially where I live. Here is not an exhaustive list of everything I've ever studied about the immune system, but some interesting papers in case you want to read up more on the topics that I just discussed. This is a picture of my family. I am so thankful that 26 years ago, I ran into Juice Plus which altered the course of not just my health, but my understanding of how my body really works. I hope that I also inspired you 
to add some more plant nutrition into your life, as well as look at these other factors that affect our immune system.